Hi, this is Carrie Brownstein. This is DJ Premier. This is Darren Aronofsky. You got the Rizzo right here. Rose McGowan. Right here. Hey. Taisha Tyler. A tribe Called Quest. Fred Armisen. Fritz Paul. Javier Munoz. Seth Meyers. Frankie Cosmos. Flying Lotus. Hi, we're Haim, and you're listening to the Talk House Podcast. Ow! What's up? This is Elia Einhorn. Welcome back to the Talk House Podcast. Today I'm joined by... Annie Fell, Associate Editor. What about this theme tune, man? So great. Got a little facelift for the podcast. We do, we do. Courtesy of The Range. Big shouts to James Hinton for our brand new theme song. Today's show features not one, but two conversations recorded backstage at Pitchfork Music Festival. This is a twofer. We have not done this for a couple of years now, Annie, Mm-mm. but this one warranted it. We have none other than Fleet Fox's main man, Robin Pecknold, in conversation with UK axe slinger Nilla for Yanya. And then we've got the one and only Dev Hines of Blood Orange with super producer Raphael Sadiq. Boom! Listeners, Fleet Foxes are back! After a six-year hiatus, last year they dropped Crack Up, another fantastic, fantastic Fleet Foxes LP. Now, during those six years, Robin did some serious soul searching. He spent time backpacking, cooking, woodworking, surfing. He even studied English at Columbia. That makes sense, Annie. The title of this record actually comes from a 1936 essay by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is talking about the author's own existential crisis. Let's take a listen to the song, If You Need To, Keep Time On Me. How could it all fall in one day? Were we too sure? Fleet Foxes always kills it. Right? They've been on the road touring the world, and actually, Robin handpicked Nila Yanya as their opener. Right, it's amazing. She's opening these huge stadium shows and still hasn't even released her debut record. Yeah, she broke out with her EP, Do You Like Pain, which was released earlier this year, and she's currently in the process of recording her debut. I can't wait to hear that, because I have to say, from the singles I've heard, we are in for a treat. Here's an example. Check out Baby Love. Beautiful. Isn't it? And in this conversation, we actually get to hear a little bit of an insight into Nilifer's new LP. But they talk about so much more. They talk about the difficulty of writing while on the road. We hear about Fleet Fox's years away from the spotlight and the process of regrouping. We hear about the pluses and minuses of workshopping new songs live before recording them. As well as the very delicate art of structuring one's set list. We also hear about Robin's decade-long fear of Pitchfork's judgment. (laughs) Yes. We also hear about how Joanna Newsom helped get Fleet Foxes back together and Robin's very cool concept for the public taking part in the recording of the next Fleet Foxes record. Should we roll the tape? Let's do it. All right. (laughs) How's it going, Nilifer? It's good. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, Yeah, almost. Nilu Fair. Nilu Fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just played... Uh, my set. How did it go? It was actually really good. Yeah, I was quite nervous, but... I saw you at the Forum Festival in Arizona. Uh, yes, I saw you too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're that playing was... in the um, really big amphitheater. Yeah, and uh, I loved your set. And, you. and you sounded beautiful. I saw, I saw this show last night too. I missed it today, but yeah. So thanks it's so cool much. to talk to you. I'm a big fan. So That's cool. Um, thanks for having me on your tour. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much for doing it. Oh, it's great. It's a great experience. I thought it would be longer, though. Is that your whole U.S. tour? That is, yeah. I mean, we've done like 150 shows already on this record. So okay. this is kind of like oh, the last okay. push of shows for before we start okay. working on right. new music again. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What, what are you looking forward to playing today at Pitchfork? Yeah, we have we have like a horn quartet with us. And so that is always really fun 
it's just great to be like a 10 piece band up there and like it makes that was the, the same as last night though yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um that takes some of the pressure off a little bit because i get pretty nervous at these things especially when really? they're pitchfork sanctioned but <laughs> still yeah so yeah, like yeah. 10 years and yeah still. i was actually th- i think yeah because we played our first pitchfork festival like 10 years ago 2008 yeah oh, okay. <laughs> And I was so nervous for that. And then the next time we played it, I was, I was, I think that's the most nervous I've ever been at a show period. Really? Um, but it, yeah, but something about the, the company just inspires fear and. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Pitchfork or the company, I mean, the company it keeps. Pitchfork. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. They're quite like, they say what, exactly what they think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unvarnished truth. <laughs> <clears throat> which is good obviously. But I, I heard about you from that article that they wrote last year that was okay the brilliant nonchalant guitar pop oh, okay. <laughs> and it was great and so it's it's always a good way to like hear about new music mm. yeah it's a good way to get into music yeah. i think new stuff for sure have you enjoyed touring this album i absolutely have I, it's been like um a huge learning experience because we took like a five year break from touring. Mm. And so I basically forgot how to do it or uh, to some extent, you know, some of it comes back easily, but a lot of it was like, like it took me a few months to even like be able to sing the show every night and like not feel like I was Dying. like just getting my like yeah. muscles back, my throat, whatever, back up to speed. But now at this phase of it, it's been going really well. And, and it's been, I mean, some, territories have been better than others but on the whole it's been like really a great experience you know that's for sure. cool that's good to know yeah are you how long <laughs> what's your tour situation like right now um it's been it's been quite chilled i think so far but like we haven't done any big big tours it's just like intermittent touring kind of from like february march yeah it's just hard to like balance um creating with touring for sure and that's like, the hardest part all of a sudden I realized that I needed to finish like my album mm-hmm. by the end of summer. Yeah, which is it's hard to like, be like, oh, okay. But I, you know, I've got to do all these shows as well and I want them to be good as well. So it's like, yeah. But luckily I've been working with my band for like t- two two years now. So I feel like we've rehearsed. We know we know what we're doing now right. a bit on You're stage. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, you just want to get, make sure you're giving... Well, I'm giving the most to both things. Totally. That's Are you able balance. to write on the road at all? I haven't ever done that, no. Yeah, me neither. Mm. I just kind of like sit there like, <laughs> and like think. <laughs> Do you find that your experience on the road or your experience in front of audiences um, informs the creative choices you're making on the album at all? Yeah, I'd say it like influences a bit because what you're playing on stage you can't help but pick up what the audience is, is like what they like and what they don't like and how yeah. they're reacting to it. So sometimes I'm like, yeah, this will be really good on stage. But like in the studio, you're like, hmm. I think it's a test, like, you know, it's a good way to test things out Yeah, that's, before are you, able you to, decide if you really want to keep it. That's cool. Your set. Are you able to do that? Are you playing songs where the recordings aren't quite complete or? Yeah, actually, I'd say with, especially like one of them, we're actually like, um, Jazzy and Luke from my band are like producing it on the road <laughs> so right cool. now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, I wrote it and then we work through the arrangement as a band, and that is to, like informing the recording. That's great. Because otherwise, a lot of the time it's the other way around, which doesn't always feel right. And even when it, even when it's successful, it doesn't feel as natural. Right. So it felt really nice to do it this way. That's my dream. Mm. You're living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> It's only one song though, not all of them. <laughs> yeah, I want to do that for next next time around. It would be great to be able to test songs live and then it's tough because you don't want to like, you want there to be some, you know, mystery or anticipation for what the songs will be before the, an album yeah. comes out. You know, you don't want to give it all away, yeah. but, at the, but it's so, I mean, music is such a conversation between like the artists and the audience that it's like to not at least initiate that conversation in a little bit and get an idea of like how it's going to go or how they feel about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if it's not on, if they can't hear it when they go and the people go back home then they'll remember it, but they won't. So it's even better, I think, to play it first. And then when it comes out, they're like, Oh, I remember this song. Yeah. Yeah. I was was thinking about doing some kind of like, like streaming from the studio or like, 
like d- recorded a studio well, that has... you have has... some live ones at the moment, don't you? I'm sorry? You put out two live tracks this year. Yeah, I mean more like w- while recording the next album, like have some camera set up okay. or like have have like a focus group with like two-way mirror thing where people can just sit in there <laughs> and watch us record and like rate it on a scale of one. To <laughs> <laughs> no, not actually, but, but it's fun. It's fun to get like a... Uh, Live is good. Mm. Very insightful. <laughs> <clears throat> so you not you definitely not do you not play any new stuff until it's out. So far, we had about a month off, like a month ago, and mm. I was able to write a bunch of songs, and I was really like in the zone, and I was excited, and so. But we we know just getting with some of them the instrumentation that we have for this tour isn't what is going to be the instrumentation on that. Mm. on those songs so we'll need to like it'll have to be like a bigger th- bigger band right. or something so okay even bigger we'll see just different instruments so it, that kind of stuff is harder to just throw a song in a set you know but yeah but there's stuff that's being worked on for sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah i feel like because you've been doing it for like so long now you know exactly how to structure the set and a lot of um attention is put on like creating that which is really cool I think that's yeah. like something you can only do with the t- time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it just takes 10 years of like picking the best songs and like seeing what works. And But it's been a total learning process of like how to structure a set again because you just lose that perspective mm. you know, when you're not doing it, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because like when you think, when you watch someone else playing, you don't really think about, wow, great structure. Like uh-huh. <laughs> they put that song there. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Uh-huh. You just absorb it. You don't. You're not thinking like nice order. <laughs> yeah. Where? What's? What's? Your, where do you drop your biggest jam in the set? <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, me. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to put one at the end, one Very middle, end. one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. They're the ten poles that support the mm. right. Yeah, I think like toward the end and like in the middle, and then everything else you can put like to in taste. Between. Yeah, yeah. Because people say, "Put your, you want to start really strong," but you do. But if it's a festival, especially like a lot of people won't be there yet, right? And if it's a gig, like people could be late. So yeah, especially opening. Is you kind of want to save it for sure. Yeah, but some stuff just sounds like opening, so that's good. Cool. Because you're from London, do you do most of your touring in the UK, or have you done that so far? Or? Um, yeah, I haven't done too much. I haven't done as much in the UK. Yeah, we did like a UK tour this year and which was like five days. So we did a few of like the major other cities. Before that, it was mainly like, I'd say Europe. I did more like European. I feel like I've done more European touring than UK touring because mm-hmm. it's kind of just London and then Manchester sure. and then Leeds and you just kind of rotate. Right. And then you maybe do Bristol or like Glasgow. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. What Did you like the UK when you toured there? Yeah, uh, we yeah we toured there like crazy. I mean, ten years ago we went there maybe ten times, and then it's been a little less every time we've gone back, um, as far as the amount of shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we spent a lot of time. What's over your there. favorite venue in the UK? Yeah. Ooh man, um, that's a tough one. It's funny because like in the UK, a lot of them are owned by like a O2 or the mm. Academy or something. Big ones, yeah. So we'll play we'll play those. And that's kind of, and they actually all have the same dressing room. Do they? And yeah. Okay. <laughs> like across the country, <laughs> they have this, and the same Wi-Fi password, so your your, your phone will like Just auto connect, connect. You know, and it's like, oh man, that's that's a feeling. So <laughs> they did on purpose. It's like O2, you're yeah, home. <laughs> we own you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of non O2 venues, even though they're all very great. Uh, we played it like a bathosphere. I guess you haven't played any smaller ones. So. No, we, yeah, we have. Yeah, okay. uh, Leeds Social Club. Yeah, Brutonelle Social it's Club. So nice, that place is great. Yeah, yeah. that play, we played there with Beach House and on an early tour, and that was really fun. And then, um, oh man, the Roundhouse I think was mm. probably the favorite venue in London. Okay. Yeah. 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 Some people don't like the sound. Yeah, I, 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 f- I think it's pretty. I think it's good. It's okay. It's not. Yeah. I just, venue though. I just remember, yeah, the the way it looked and like the feeling on stage was really good, like a good size, but not, you know. What about you? This week was like my favorite venue before I did loads of like, shows in London was O2 um, Brixton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I supported um, Broken Social Scene. Oh, cool, yeah. Like yeah. last year there. And we, so we, I was played there. That was really like a trip, I guess. Yeah. But 
on stage isn't it's like you feel so far away from the crowd and everything's so big yeah yeah. so yeah. it's actually it was one of my favorite to play because i knew it was my favorite mm-hmm. place to like watch those but it wasn't like my favorite you show. didn't feel that mm. connected yeah you don't yeah. feel connected everything's just so far away that's really that's a real that's a struggle uh, i think because the sweet spot is sort of like 200 or 300 or something mm. you can like or 30 you know yeah and, and just and just in terms of feeling like you are like like in a conversation and it's not just a presentation of something. I admire artists that are able to like play bigger stages but still have it feel um, familial, you know? Yeah. Which I don't know if we really ever nailed, but... I feel yeah. like your music would come across well, though, in a small, smaller room as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be good. Hopefully we just tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> so you're working on an album now. Mm-hmm. And are you including any of the songs that you've already released? No. No, no it's no. all new. Mm. It's still nothing from the EPs or the... Nothing. Yeah, no. yeah. Okay. No. There's well, like one song on it which is older than all of them. Right. Which I have as like a demo still online, but mm-hmm. um, everything else is going to be new. Cool. I mean, because you've been releasing stuff every year basically for the last while, huh? Yeah. I think two years ago was when I wrote it. Two summers ago when I released the first single. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like I don't want to re-release yeah. stuff because when, yeah, it just feels like I should have moved on by now. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And I have written more stuff, so I should like yeah. make it sound like write more stuff around that instead of like patching it together. For sure. Mm-hmm. When you had your, your like your kind of gap, like mm-hmm. were you still writing or? Yeah, less, less, um, I was like telling myself like, oh, I'll just like, I'm not going to force it, but I'm just, when something comes to me that feels like it could turn into something that feels um, legitimate or not redundant, then I'll hang on to it, you know? And so I would just kind of do it as like a, to blow off steam at the end of the day. Yeah. But I wasn't like, okay, now I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to go in and every day and write something. And like, instead of like waiting for these, like what I considered to be like gems or something, I'm just going to like power through a ton of stuff without a lot of judgment and then just pick the best stuff from there, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause I didn't really write beyond what's on the last album we made. I didn't write any music for it aside from that music. You know, it was all like, there's nothing extra, you know? Okay. And so on this one, I'd like there to be a lot of extra stuff. Okay. But yeah. And what was it like when you had your break? Like, what was it like taking a break? How did you kind of unwind from that and like being like, okay, I'm going to, how did you like stop basically? So how did I stop the break or how did yeah. I stop? Uh, just once I had like, once it was like, well, actually it was kind of like, um, I was asked to open a tour for Joanna Newsom, and, and so that, um, her asking me to do that kind of kickstarted me finishing songs yeah. and like, you know, getting back in that mindset. And then from there it was just like, oh, actually this feels great. Mm. You know, I feel like I'm being useful and like doing something. It felt like I was learning by doing it again instead of like yeah. back before where I felt kind of like a little bit stagnant. You know? Oh, okay. Once you've been, okay. And so, yeah. and I still feel that way. Like I'm learning something every day and that's good. You know, I think that like keeps it interesting and yeah. like even writing songs, I'm learning something every day. And so that was kind of what kickstarted it. And okay. Yeah. But when you, when you stopped, did you feel like an absence of like something? Like, did you feel kind of weird not doing what you've been doing for the last yeah, I mean, mainly feeling, well, I, but it was also that kind of thing where I was like in the mindset where everything that I was working on, I didn't relate to. Okay. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Are you, is, do you feel like pretty connected to your songs? Sometimes the I'm working ones. on stuff and I'm just like, this is <laughs> trash, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what part of me is wanting to do this right okay. now, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, part of it was just like, this is all garbage and I'm just like, close that door while it's bad. Okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I did, I felt disconnected from writing songs and I wasn't really clear about why that had, it had come to be that way. I guess it was like a confluence of external events. Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. So it just took a while to not feel that way anymore. And now I feel pretty good. Yeah. It's great speaking to you. Great talking to you as well. <laughs> yeah. See you in Cleveland. See you in Cleveland. <laughs> we'll always have Cleveland. <laughs> Andy, no matter where their paths lead them, 
they'll always have Cleveland. A beautiful story between these two beautiful artists. I gotta say, I cannot wait to hear Nilifer's record. Oh, it's gonna be incredible. Another record that I've been waiting a long time for, New Blood Orange. Now, listeners, in your time as you hear this, there is a New Blood Orange LP. Negro Swan will have just dropped last Friday. In our reality here, back in the time machine, we haven't heard the whole thing yet. I'm so jealous of these future listeners who have already <laughs> heard it. The new record features collaborations with ASAP Rocky, Kelsey Lou, Puff Daddy, and so many more. And I have to say, Annie, Blood Orange is a longtime favorite of mine. Dev Hines has made a trademark of mixing R&B, pop, and sort of experimental records. To me, this is a brilliant artist who clearly loves both Prince and Arthur Russell. He's an amazing dancer and choreographer, and he's worked with stars like Sky Ferreira, Carly Rae Jepsen, FKA Twigs, and the one and only Britney, Miss Britney Spears. Spears. <laughs> it's amazing. And, 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 and you know what? Having said all that, he's also performed multiple times with Philip Glass. I would love to see that choreography. Now, on Blood Orange Records, Dev really brings powerful, political, and socially conscious lyrics. I was a huge fan of his last LP, 2016's Freetown Sound. Such a great album. For this fourth record, I want to share something that Dev wrote. He said, My newest album is an exploration into my own and many types of black depression. An honest look at the corners of black existence and the ongoing anxieties of queer slash people of color. A reach back into childhood and modern traumas and the things we do to get through it all. The underlying thread through each piece of the album is the idea of hope and the lights we can try to turn on within ourselves with a hopefully positive outcome of helping others out of their darkness. Somehow he takes that mixed emotion and turns it into something danceable. Let's see an example of that on the track Charcoal Baby from the new album. No one wants to be the It's amazing. Dev Hines is a multi-instrumentalist who has mastered the art of using the studio to achieve his incredibly unique sonic vision. You can hear that just from that one track. Totally. That's a characteristic that also defines the other half of this conversation. Raphael Sadiq. This dude is seriously one of the sickest bassist drummer vocalists I have ever seen. He can do everything. He does it all. He actually got his huge break early on touring with Sheila E's band, performing around the world with Prince. Dude, can you imagine going around the world with Prince? No, I wish (laughs) I could, but no. He's got some amazing stories. He then came to real prominence as a member of New Jack Swing stars, Tony, Tony, Tony. Listeners, do you remember Feels Good? I was a big fan. He went on to an amazing career full of solo records, scoring for TV, and of course, producing for an amazing who's who of music superstars. He's worked with, bear with me, I'm going to take a breath here. (sighs) Usher, Mary J. Blige, Justin Timberlake, Erica Badu, D'Angelo, Miguel, Elton John, TLC, Questlove, Jay Dilla, Mick Jagger, Kendrick Lamar, and so many, many more. (sighs) And somehow he finds time to work on his own music still, too. (laughs) It's amazing. The artist that brought these two together was actually Solange. Or as they call her, Solo. They met while recording her incredible 2016 LP, A Seat at the Table. Dev and Raphael share some amazing stories about working on that Grammy-winning record, and they talk about so much more. They talk about how when Raphael was growing up, being around deadheads influenced his music. Right. I mean, definitely not an influence I expected Raphael to have in the bank. I'll tell you that. We hear all about the writing and recording of Dev's powerful new album and the new joint Raphael's working on, titled Jimmy Lee After His Brother and the story behind it. We also hear about Raphael's MMA fighting collaborator. And, fittingly, production. Everything from what software each of the guys uses to getting that perfect kick sound to how Dev makes the most of each of the many studios he works in. Check it out. Hello, I'm Raphael Sadiq. Hey, I'm Devontae Hines. And we go. We just go. We're running from here. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's up? I haven't seen you in, like, when's the last time I've seen you? Um, in New York. New York, yeah. That's your yeah. lady. Yeah. And Solange, it's, it's, it's yeah. a session. Right, right, That's right. right. Wow. And, and another time after that. I was think, I in L.A. maybe? That was in L.A. 
That yeah. was in LA. And then yeah. I was in your studio while you weren't there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there. I heard about that. I heard you was there. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Likewise, um, thank you. Follow thank everything you. you've done. Oh, man. Um, from the beginning. Amazing story, amazing videos. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it, that. Really, yeah, very creative. I was, I'll say, wow, this dude is like, love the name, the group, everything. So like, what was your process? How'd you even come up with the, the Blood Orange thing? I always wondered that. Oh, you know, it's weird. I don't think anyone's actually asked me that before. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of funny. <laughs> I don't even really know. I think it, I used to draw comics in school and um, it, it was like a, a title of one of the comics I drew in school and I kind of uh okay. I've always had like a stockpile of names and titles just kind of ready yeah to pull from okay that makes then, sense yeah, yeah that, that makes that sense was... so your mind is always sort of working yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I do the same things I I kind of um have all these titles and in, in notes for albums and names and mm. half of them I never get a chance to use. Yep. <laughs> and then like some of them stick and then some don't. And then I title a record like 20 times before the record comes out. <laughs> then I wait to the last day when I have to turn it in and go, okay, this is the one that stuck. So I, I totally understand wow. that. But I always wonder how'd you come up with that name? Yeah. It's weird. You know, part of me sometimes wishes it, that I just went by my name, but it's, it's kind of like a, a conflict in a emotion. I think it's cool, like, cause I, I kind of wish I wouldn't have went by my name, <laughs> yeah. because it's hard to, um, to come up with something for R and the S. It's the worst mm. to come up with an image for like a great logo <laughs> with an R and the S. It's like it's almost like fucking impossible. I like, I oh like despise God. the R and the S. <laughs> like we we've. We kind of came close, but never, never nailed it. I like the typefaces you use, actually, for the yeah. records. I, 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 I can't draw. I don't think I can, but I've seen some artists that probably I could. Yeah. But I always think, because I, I draw kind of like not straight, that I couldn't be an artist. I think I was in the fourth grade and I was in this art class and I couldn't make a, the circle straight. <laughs> so I, I just jumped out of the art class. And now when I look at different art, I'm like, I didn't really have to, to make straight lines. Right. You know, I didn't know that, but hey. Whatever, but I, like I do that. have a lot of friends who are artists. Yeah, and so I just hang out with them and just watch them paint and draw and yeah. And they sit, when I make music, sometimes they just sit there and um and paint wow. or just come up with different stuff. That's so nice. The vibe in your studio is so good. Thanks. It's like unreal. I don't even know how to you know, explain it. Yeah, it's kind of like um you know I'm from Oakland, so I'm moving to LA. Um, Probably in the late night, well, maybe like 2003, I moved mm. to Los Angeles and I basically was hiding from Los Angeles. I only moved there for the business. Right. <laughs> I really didn't want to be there. Yeah. So I had to make everything homely inside the studio. So that's like the sanctuary for okay, yeah. musicians. So I, I didn't purposely that. do it like that. I just can't, I was hiding. Yeah. So everything had to be like it was in Oakland. So I, I brought a little bit wow. of the Bay Area. It does feel, it feels Bay Area. Yeah, so, yeah. and I know, I only know because people come there and they say, it feels really good in here. And I go, wow, and I didn't even pay nobody to come set right. it up. It's just, you know, <laughs> day by day, I would grab different things, yeah. you know, put a chair here. Then if I had a couch and somebody I had bad energy for like three years and people sat on that couch. I just removed the couch from the studio. Like I don't have any furniture in my <laughs> that lobby. That is perfect. Now I don't have any furniture in my lobby and now I just have like a little small circular table and three stalls. Mm. And that way if people come there to work, they can't stop in the lobby. They just go straight to work. Wow. So, it? <laughs> <laughs> that one chair messed me up. You know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> In the studio? In the studio. The sleeper? Oh, the, the the orange one? The orange one. The orange one, yeah. That's, my, that's the only one I kept. That is crazy. That's the only one I kept. And it's funny, on on, on my way out here, I was selling, you know, because I don't have, you know, basically I'm out here raw dogging it with, you know, right. it's no production. It's just, just do it, right? Yeah. So I was like, can I bring this chair? <laughs> I wanted to bring the chair. That chair. <laughs> Wait, I is it here? No, I couldn't <laughs> bring it. I, I wanted to bring that chair. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow, I know that sounds so vague. I know. <laughs> like everyone listening. <laughs> the chair is orange. It's like a dope chair, though. But it's... I don't even know where I got the chair from. I don't even it's know crazy. how that happened. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, so did you, so was Instant Vintage done in LA or was that post? You moved Instant to LA Vintage after? Instant Vintage was done, I did most of it in the Bay Area. Ah, okay. And then I mixed most of it in um, LA mm. at this studio. It was called Hollywood. It's on uh, Vine, which now is, uh, Kanye has the studio now. He ah. bought the space. But a lot of people had the space before. On Vine, now. on like the, the west? left side. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, building. I mixed, I mixed yeah. everything there and then uh, I yeah. got my studio. The very end and I recorded one song, like a hidden track at the end of the album. Mm. I just had to record something. But other than that, I, I did everything in Oakland. And um, then I came to LA. I like recording in Oakland. I'm going to go back. Even though I have my own studio, you know, you, sometimes yeah. you just want to get out. and Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel that. Go some different restaurants and record, you know. <laughs> you got to... You know, you gotta walk outside, see different people, and yeah. walk back in. I think that's the funnest thing about making music when you're just in different places. Totally. totally. This is the first this <clears throat> record I'm about to put out is maybe one of the first times where the majority of it wasn't actually recorded in my studio. Okay. I, I would go around, bring mini setups like hotel rooms or rented house. Yes. Then I did a couple moments where I uh, rented studios which was kind of like for me to break out, I rent a studio, I would go and not bring anything except for a hard drive to see, to see what I could make there. And then I would like take the parts and bring it home or to the studio. So so what do you record on? What do you record with? What, you so, I mean, I use Logic. You use Logic? Yeah. I, I even mixed a bunch of the record on Logic. For wow, this one, okay. Too, which is maybe a little crazy, but... Yeah, anything else you record on that you want to start recording? I know everybody's telling you you should start recording on Ableton. Everyone says that. <laughs> <laughs> Including me, I'm going to tell you. I mean, you. the drums bang. Every time I hear someone make something on Ableton, I'm like, yeah. damn, this drums sound crazy. I say that, crazy. I mean, I could never make the drums bang in Logic. You can't. I couldn't. I, I've heard some people do it, and some of my friends in, in, in London was like, I will be in recording my studio at the mm -hmm. board and playing drums and doing all this stuff, and then the students would be like, in the back on the couch with some headphones on. <laughs> and they'd be like, plug this up. Wow. Dude, I was like, what? Damn. They're killing me. Oh, they're killing me. So if I try, I just could never make my drums bang. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sort of like, uh, so I, I could play drums, so I could feel like if I just hit the kick harder, the drum will bang. Right. <laughs> you know, I couldn't really get to the, like, the, um, the approach of like, yeah. let me go find out how to use this different tool to make it hit, even though you still have them for regular drums, so you can pull tech or whatever, whatever yeah. you want to use, whatever need, whatever you want to do, you want to compress it. Right. And I just never, I couldn't do it in Logic. Then I was tired of paying engineers. <laughs> That's the other That's thing. what happened. <laughs> That's the other thing. <laughs> I've been like a cap chick for like the last 20 years, <laughs> like engineers like spending like, you know, all this money. And I was like, you know what, my, my, my nephew said dude, you should learn Ableton. I'm like, cool, come to the studio. So I'm working. I'm trying to work and learn. So I'm, he's like, okay, just push that. I'm like, oh. I'm like, you push it. So I'm trying to make him work. <laughs> then he just left. And so then my other engineer started teaching me. And then I, I, I caught on to it and it's like the best thing. It's like, it's like cheating, man. Like to make things hit in Ableton is really like, you like point to this button and go like, really, if I turn that, my right. kick is just going to be like, be like, <laughs> I'm every, like, yo, what? I got it in my back. I got it all here. Every time I see I'm in a room with someone using Ableton, I think about the lengths I go to in Logic for the move they just did in yeah, two seconds. Right, yeah. Every single time. I'm just like, damn, you just like sampled that like that? <laughs> but see how creative you are, how your mind works to listen to your music. You probably kill everybody on it. So I tell all my friends that's super create, creative, I'm like, I know it's a different learning curve. It feels like it, but I'm telling you, like, probably in four or five days, you'll be to where I'm at. Damn. So then, like, in just three it. months, you'll be doing all kind of stuff. You'll be like, <laughs> your mind is like that, so it'll just go, like, crazy. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. So no, I should. I'm probably I mean, the 30th person that told you. To get. No, but I, sh I should. <laughs> yeah. I got her. Yeah, if you get some time off, you know, just... Right. Just check, just check it out. I would love to hear what you come up with. Yeah. In I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll you know, like, you know, that way we could just like you yeah. can send me stuff. I could be like, "Yo, send me this." I could just add stuff. You could like, I'm just, uh, I'm like a, it's like a game. I feel yeah. like it's a video game. Yeah. 
This time, I was less... Um, no, nah, I guess I was still pretty nerdy. But the album before, I was like really nerdy with some of the things to get drum sounds. I was like recording things through like, you know, like tape machines and like yeah. bouncing Cassettes it back in. And and in exactly. Dropping it. I did less of that this time. But you reminded me of a funny moment where there's a song, the opening song of the record, I was really, really trying to get that like uh, the armor kick yeah. Like I was really, to, yeah, you know, just really trying to get it. I was doing all the, all kinds of things, like cutting kicks from songs and all this kind of right. stuff. And then it was like funny because I almost got caught up in myself and I thought, wait, I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. That kick in the song I'm listening to was definitely recorded on 8th Street at Electric Lady. Exactly. <laughs> I literally could walk over there and, get it. and press a kick drum yeah. and get that kick sound. Yeah. So yeah, went and booked some time and, okay. and went and did that. And yeah. I mean, you live in, in New York. I mean, people would probably be happy if you called them and said, <laughs> I mean, the sounds you could probably get in New York from people who all the studios are closed, a right. lot of them, but if it, it's, I used to get all my drum sounds in New York, because I'm more, I'm from you know the West Coast, but mm. I'm more of an East Coast like hip hop head. Right. I'm more. I live in that world more yeah. than I did the West Coast. Yeah. And my yeah. heart is in the West, but for my, sure, I, I can see that. My actually. beats are definitely <laughs> yeah from the East. Um, you know, just because they were sampling when I was coming up, they were sampling all the records I grew up listening to. You mm. know, by chance, like my neighbors. Right. You drive, some dude had a old school car, he was banging some music. Or yeah. Then, you know, when I was living, you know, close to San Francisco, so it was like you know, great, all the deadheads was in my neighborhood every time I was at a concert. Mm. The deadheads would just be staying around for like two weeks, walking around. <laughs> so you didn't even know, I didn't even know what Grateful Dead was when I was a kid, but <laughs> I just know I seen all these people walking around weeks and weeks afterwards. It was either yeah. the Parliament Funkadelic heads or Grateful Dead. So in between wow. that, I heard a lot of like, <sighs> Like you know, early seventies, late sixties, like you know, mom and papa's, all these different types of sounds yeah. in the morning on the radio. It was so much music. So when I started making music, it was very confusing. The things I was hearing, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm, I gotta do this kind of music. <laughs> I have to do this kind of music, and I have to do. I wanted to do it all. Yeah, you know. And then it's like, and then it's like indie. I start hearing like indie bands come out, and I was like, damn, what is that? Oh, that's just a hybrid of that. But they like yeah. they're seeking out. They're seeking out to do different things because they don't want to do this and that. And that's exactly how I felt, mm. you know. So um, yeah. the Bay Area just kind of gave me that. But New York always gave me um, that. Like either your drums, you know, because some music the drums is they they don't bang really. Right. It's the other qualities. Yeah, you know. So sometimes you have to just reverse that <clears throat> and go. I don't need my drums to really be hitting. Mm. But when you s start working, at, you know, like yourself in, in that digital domain or analog, yeah. You start one here at all. Yeah. I feel that actually there's been songs where in my mind it's been a reference, like another someone else's song, it's been a reference. And in my mind I'm thinking like, it needs to bang like how those drums bang. And then I go back and listen to the song and it, the drums don't bang. They don't. Like at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just something else like happening in the music. Hey, where did you grow up? London. In London, what part? East London. Okay. Yeah, grew up in East London, went to school in Essex, okay. just outside of London. And, yeah. I yeah. spent a lot of time in the earlier, my early days in the Tonys in London. We oh, used to, right. I think when I first, we first came out in the Tonys, we were wearing this brand called Boy London. Of course. <laughs> right. And, yes. um, and so all the Brits thought we were from, like I met Loose Hands back in the day in <laughs> LA. And they said, yeah. they said, Are you got, what part of England are you guys from? And we were like, <laughs> from Oakland. We were like happy though because <laughs> yeah. we were from London we were like, yeah, nobody thinks we're from. Well, they're from where I'm from actually, Lisa. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's one of my favorite groups. I always oh, reference man. those kicks from 808. I can see that. I can see that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's one wow. of my favorite. Like, I mean, when I was in high school, that was the, that was the, they, they never even really toured over here a lot at all. Right. But they yeah, were like imagine. big at the most, the, like the ghetto of school yeah. In all of East Oakland, Loose Ends was the biggest thing. They were the biggest thing <laughs> ever, like, at our school was Loose yeah. Ends, and they never really toured yeah. much. But I ran into them once we made a record. I ran into them 
and they first thing they asked me what part of England was I from, and I was like, <laughs> I say, well, and I, I, I think I never wanted to wear American clothes again. <laughs> after that, <laughs> I was like, yeah, we got to keep our right way out there. But, yeah, but um, okay, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah, that. yeah, that's real cool. It's yeah. a lot of talent out there. Um, so, so much music. It's like, how much music is out there that we don't know about? A lot. It's a lot. Like huh? you got to turn me on. You got to. Uh, even me some I stuff. don't know. Half yeah, the stuff. but you know people. That can, right. Yeah, like even the kid, uh, the kid Jai Paul. I've been knowing yeah. Jai Paul about him for a long time, but yeah. even it's got to be way more than that. Oh it, yeah, it goes deep. It goes very deep. It's very deep, right? I'm yeah. Like, every time I'm like, I'm not. There's two places I'm not surprised about that I hear a lot of talent. I'm not surprised about um, London and just you know. England period and Toronto. Yeah. I mean, I've been hearing every time I go to Toronto, I hear and Atlanta. Tons of talent. Yeah. Like unknown talent is people just outside singing, mm. pop the trunk and they'll have like music playing and start singing in front of you like Right. And it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's cool. I like that. London. <laughs> So how was it working with um Solo? We call hey, it Solo, your girl. Yeah, of course, Solo. <laughs> That's the launch. <laughs> yeah, we should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. That's you guys that's, remind me of each sis. other a lot. Yeah, y'all could Kendrick spirit both you guys. Right? Yeah, we're pretty. We're very similar. It's really funny, actually. Um, yeah, great. Always great. New stuff, equally awesome. Okay, um, it's so. Yeah, it's so easy for us to work together. I can see that, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. there's no... Uh, I, I would love to be, to watch that. That must be really like, because uh, with me working, with, when I work with Solange, um, I knew about you guys working together too. So it's like, mm. she, and I was sort of going through a lot of different things in, in my life at that time where I was changing the garbs and different things. And mm. um, so I just sort of basically let her work. You know, I just watched her work really. Yeah. And I just jumped in when... Right. It was time to jump in. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, I just stayed on All Madden playing games. <laughs> <laughs> and so she was like, Ray, and she called me, and yeah. I'll come in. What do you think about this? And I'll be like, yeah, that's cool. She's like, well, you should play bass on this. Or, <laughs> and I'll go, okay. And then I would just play something like really, something that I just really liked. Mm. So most of the time I thought she was going to say no. Like, uh, nah, nah, nah. She's like, okay, it's jamming. <laughs> Cool. And that's, that was basically, that's yeah, how it yeah. went for us. But for you guys, when I listen to the record, I know it was like way more intricate because I, right. I could hear like things, how you guys like similar and like uh, sparse. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's very, um, if you imagine like a wide like tapestry or something and it's us like fiddling away and we're, you know, she's putting ideas forward mm -hmm. then I'll, do something and then she bounces off that and then there's like a lot of yeah like thinking. effects yeah yeah act and, like effects. Like and then there's always this moment where it just like Turns suddenly it happens it. and we it'll usually at the same time we'll both be like yes there oh, it wow. is and then it kind yeah, of it happens clicks in. yeah but so the, but that's the last record was fire thanks so man that's, thanks that's dope it yeah. sounds yeah, it's she, like one of my favorite sounding records. Yeah, she, um, I tell people, she's just like, uh, you know, sometimes when people let you do what you like, and you know, like I don't, I don't really, don't really call myself a producer. Mm. So I just, I come from the band world. Right. So it's, it takes a lot of pressure off me just to say, if I'm working with you, like, no, we're just a band and whatever we come up with, yeah. that's what it is. But if I, if I, if, you know, it works for some people to say they're a producer, but for me, it takes a lot of pressure off me. If you walk in the room and I go like, hey, I'm yeah. not the producer. I'm just- uh, I feel you Whatever you want to title it in is on you, but <laughs> I'm just, the, I'm in your band and whatever happens, hope everybody like it. And that's exactly. sort of it for me. I feel, I feel the same way. This video, I don't know the name of the video I just saw. No, I saw like maybe a year ago, maybe less than a year ago. I think it's you by yourself. You're dancing, it's all white. Yeah, yeah. Uh, time will tell. Was you by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time will tell. Yeah, that, I love that video. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I, had to, cool. I had to study that video. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, that's so bold. I'm like, <laughs> actually, I saw it with Solange. I think. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, you guys still remind me of each other. It's crazy. It's dope. When did you last see her? 
When did I last see Solange? Um, I think I saw her in LA and she was, um, her and her son, and they were going to buy, a, uh, they was buying furniture for a new place or something. And um, yeah. I think I went to like one or two places with them. <laughs> I've run those and, errands too. Yeah, you know, and then, you, then, you, then you're like, yeah, and the son is like, he's like, He's tired. He's like, yo, I'm ready to go. You know, he's big now. He's big. We've been hooping. He's like, he's big, yeah. big boy now. So um, we just, yeah. I think that's the last time I saw her. It was just uh, some, some in LA. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god. I'm sure you've been on a lot of those like shopping sprees. Oh, I've been on. I, yeah. I mean, I initiate them too sometimes. So I gotta. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. take that. I, I do. totally don't initiate them. <laughs> I don't need nobody to do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm steering away from all the shopping. <laughs> It's all over. I'm maxed out. Oh my Literally. God. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you working on right now? I'm actually working on a new record. Great. I'm working on an album called Jimmy Lee. My cool. brother's named Jimmy Lee. Uh, <clears throat> he passed away, but he was a heroin addict. And so I made a record about addiction, really. And uh, mm. But all kinds of addiction. My brother was like, it's not really a sad thing. My brother was the funniest dude in the world, even on the highest he ever was. He was always right. hilarious. And he always act like he wasn't high. I don't actually I don't really know when he was high. Never knew when he was high. Mm. He just had the drug look. Right. One hundred percent. Like he had the drug look ever since I was a kid. He was older than me. I was sort of like the mistake kid. So all my brothers and sisters are like older than me. So when people will see my brother and me, I will pull up, they will be like, How you know him? <laughs> and, then like, oh, man. and my brother be like, that's my little brother. And they're like, that's your brother? To me, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's my brother. So I ended up yeah. making a record about him and about addiction to like, you know, a lot of people addicted to, you know, drugs, mm. shopping, right, <laughs> sweets, donuts, chocolate, coffee. And yeah. that's when I start realizing how I was addicted to like getting up in my place and getting up and getting like a chocolate chip cookie and some coffee. I'm like, damn, I can't stop. Then I started thinking about people who had these other addictions like drugs who we always say, you know, why can't you just stop? Like, I'm like, damn, that's a chemical. This is a cookie. Right. I start matching, you know, measuring yeah. my, my cookie to the chemical. I'm like, maybe it's chemicals in my cookie. Mm. Because I, last night on the tour bus, it was like, I had to walk past these donuts, bro. And it was the hardest. <laughs> it was the, I opened up the box and I was like, I looked and I was like... <sighs> So I just I made this you. made this record. So it's still still a fun record though. Yeah, yeah. And um, but most of it's about addiction in some type of way. Wow. Some up tempo stuff on it, some dark stuff on it, mm. some lighter stuff on it, some fun stuff. But and I titled the record Jimmy Lee. Wow. So I, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. I think I have like one more song to record. Ninety percent of it is Ableton. Three songs is analog. Damn, I gotta. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's all like Ableton. I work with Brooke from um, Jay Davy. Oh, yeah. Me and Brooke work together. He's a nut on Ableton. Um, I work with this kid named Charlie Burrell, who's playing guitar with me tonight. I just worked with this guy who actually signed me, signed our group back in the day to Tony's, and he started being, he was an MMA fighter later on. He was fighting. What? Yeah, I didn't know. And then I was like, he had been fighting and everything, and I came back to a show in Oakland. I was like, dude, he, he stopped you know, fighting <laughs> anymore. But I was like, and I should talk trash to this dude. I can't believe that I said like, yeah. when we got out of our deal, I was like, yeah, the first album we did was Bubblegum. You know, I didn't like the first album and this dude could have just kind of broke my neck like <laughs> in any time. But <laughs> but I came back, to, I, I went and got him. I was like, man, we should do a record. And he, he didn't have the, he had the confidence, but he just didn't believe like, did mm -hmm. I really want to do it? So I had to like go back to the studio and we did like two records. He like, he makes crazy beats. He did, yeah. he made like the records in like the late 80s, like I got five on it. Oh, Lunas? He made the, he, he made the original one, like, oh, uh, well, like, uh, some, yeah. like Jealousy for Club Nouveau. Yeah. He's the, so he signed to the Tonys. He found us. Wow. He found us. He knew about us and then he ended up getting a deal before us. And then he got a production deal. He came back and and um, the record company had turned us down because we were trying to be the police, the black police. So we, <laughs> we weren't playing no R and B. We were like straight up three people, bass, guitar, and yeah. drums. But in America, nobody was buying that they were, shit. Yeah. It was like no. They didn't want that. So they went back and told the label that we know what to do with them. And then that's what I went up being more like R and B stuff on the first albums and stuff. And, but I went and got him back to do some more like real R and B, like really banging. Mm stuff but you know 
it was hard to get him to do it though. Wow. He's like, no, he has like three kids, a wife. He's, yeah. His son's a fighter. You know, they all like wow. fighters. And he was like, okay. That's amazing. Had he been making stuff in the time? No, he owns a really nice studio in Oakland though. But he mm. um he rents it out. He walks in. He walks out. He messes around on Logic a little bit. I'm trying to get on Ableton. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of working. He bought it. And um, he's juiced now. Now I get in the studio. He's like, I've tried. I get an idea. He's like, no, don't do this. I'm like, hey, I, just, I don't want you to come back. That's <laughs> you know, He's back. So, so wow. that's what I've been working on, man. Just uh, That's cool. Working on that and just uh, buying equipment. I accidentally yeah. moved across the street from a place that sells vintage equipment and Vintage King, and that's, that's like, that's, I didn't know. I just looked out my balcony, and I was like, uh-oh. you got to be shitting me. That's Vintage King? <laughs> like, ah. Oh. So I'm over there looking at microphones and, oh, you know, stuff crazy. like that all the that's time. That's in L.A.? Yeah. That's in, like, Echo Park. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's it, man. Just um, just trying to put the paint where it ain't, you know. Just yeah. trying, I'm just trying to make this thing as fun as I possibly can. I've been doing it for a long time, so yeah. now it's all about, like, it's always been fun to me. I just want mm. to keep it being fun and not stale, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you got you got a new record coming out. Yeah, I got a new one coming out in like four weeks. It just feels crazy. <laughs> it feels insane. Wow. Yeah. Are you ready? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I am. Do you, is it is it done? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just so you just getting what? What do you have to? How you how you preparing to like? Come um, you got to get like the show together. You have yeah, to, that's it. Getting the show together. Um, there are mad amounts of videos. How, like, how um, many videos? You shooting all the videos before you come out? Y- yeah, yeah, Damn. and then maybe a couple after, but been drilling, been like so that's the way to go. Coloring videos while like editing another. You and shooting then them yourself? The other one. I've yeah, I've directed. Three, third one next week, and then a friend of mine in London directed one of them, which was amazing because I hadn't done that in a long time, but I've always liked what he did, mm-hmm. and so it was so fun for me to just like whew, sit back, sit back, and let it happen, and let it let it go down. So, um, how many vid- how many visuals are you uh, putting out um, with this record? How many how many songs are on the record? Sixteen. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and you're shooting sixteen visuals? No, 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 no. I'm not gonna do it like that. Cause a lot of them actually the album's fifty minutes. So oh, it's it, just like bye bye. Okay. Right. It like kind of flies by. So there's a lot of kind of short moments that I'm attaching to the top of the videos Value. and stuff Value. like that. Um but I have ideas for three or four more. Okay. I have like I have nine records. Well, I wanted to do 10. I was going to do like six or seven. And then everybody came out and did seven. And then my friend said, it's going to look like you copying. Right. <laughs> Isn't that the worst when that happens? In- <laughs> it's like, yeah, my boys school went off. They didn't, they didn't like the idea yeah. the whole thing. I was like, <laughs> well, if you put like, you know, five or six records out, you can always put the other five out. Another time, but my thing was I had way too many songs. I had like twenty five to thirty songs, yeah. and I couldn't choose which ones I want on the record. So the the lower the number was for me, it made it easier for me to, to complete a record. So when I locked in on ten or nine, one's the interlude, and and it's just you know I was thinking I have to shoot videos, but the video is gonna be like a like a remix, and maybe there's like nine songs that I can't explain what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Most of my songs, I can't explain what I'm talking right. about in my lyrics. Yeah. Unless you just really like weird and just really get me yeah. or you just been through what I've been through. But people kind of listen to it like, I kind of know what he's talking about. But, <laughs> and it's okay when people don't know what you're yeah, talking about. I you love know, it. People make sense out of things they want to make sense out of. Yeah. You know, but... I think I need, to, if I give them a visual, I don't have to talk as much on the stage explaining it to people. Yeah. But I, I kind I, of. I agree. <laughs> That's uh, my shit. I'm doing visuals to explain this. Okay. Because you know? I'm inspired now that you told me that you're doing that. Now that I know I have to do that, I think last night was my first night on this 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 run, mm. and I was explaining everything. Man, it was like I was in a science I, like I was a science project to people. <laughs> and today will probably be the same way, <laughs> but it's okay. I think I feel like this is the place where you um you test out music and yeah, you, 
you know, if you have people in the audience that they get a chance to be a part of an experience. So yeah. I'm with that, yeah. You playing new stuff? Yeah, I'm playing like um, three new things. Um, I'm playing some stuff from my Instant Vintage records. Ooh. Some from, I'm doing a Dilla <laughs> cover he did with Lucy Pearl. He did without you. I'm doing yeah, that. Um, no way. Oh my god. I do a little bit of the Tony stuff. Like I mean, like da, 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 da. <laughs> I mean, it's so fast. The, my show was over so fast last night trying to get ready for Pitchfork in Minnesota. To, I looked and I was at the end of the set. I had one more song and I was like, I looked at the band like, if I sing this song, this is all we have. It's nothing <laughs> left. This is it. This is the 55 minute joint. This is the pitchfork. Yeah. And I'm looking, the crowd was looking like, I just got there. I played a lot of stuff. And then just, I just told them, I just had to like fake and go to the side and go, how much time do I have? And no, nobody told me. Nobody, they just came back and went. Oh, I'm like, that's but, not what I wanted to yeah, hear. I wanted to hear, <laughs> I need to know if I had like, you know, it's like, you got time. So I just started singing, like making making up stuff, acapella songs. Oh, cool. They start shouting out different names of songs they wanted wow. to hear. Some songs I didn't know the words to completely. I just played the music and then stopped again. Yeah. And start. But they they seem to enjoy though. that kind of like spontaneous. They, yeah. they liked it, but I thought it was a disaster, but they liked yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's another one of those. There's so many things like that that, I as a fan would love, but myself as the musician, yeah. it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. There's so many situations like that. Yeah, but I was like, I love the show. I was like, cool, I'm glad, because I was, I was so confused. Yeah. But you know, it was, it was their first dive. It was in Prince Club. So it was like, you know, I just started to take a page out of Purple Rain. It was right. Like, this is when he tried out, you know, songs that weren't hits. Yeah. And you know, my record now, my next record is, I don't, think there's a lot of hit songs on my record because no, I wasn't really going for any of that. I was going mm. for just uh, songs you might want to hear again. You know, like... Yeah, that's, same, same, really. That's my yeah. thing. I tell my friends, I'm like, yo, I, I call one of my friends. I want him to, to to sing on it or just play on the record. And I said, I'm going to send you this record. I said, okay, it's not a hit song, but you know, I had to warn him because he, you know, he, cause when you send stuff to people, it's a different idea that they have. Yeah. You say, I'm about to send you something. Yeah, it's like, oh, shh. Yeah, I'm, whatever. To, I'm like, it's not a hit, but it's something that we both like, would like, you know, yeah. so that's sort of the feel of my record. That's yeah. great. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to hear yours either, man. Oh, man, yeah. I'll, I can't I'll wait to tell Solange I hung out with you. She's like, what? Yeah, she's going to freak. We interviewed each other. It was so dope. <laughs> so dope. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anya curated a big event with Solange at Chicago's Museum of Contemporary Art last year. And guess who she talked about? Raphael and Dev. How'd you know? <laughs> yeah. Lucky guess. Big thank you to Pitchfork Music Festival for hosting the Talk House podcast there for our fourth year running. Thanks to Carolina Barej for coordination help at the festival. Thank you to Talk House interns Julia Binswanger and Laura McGrath for research on today's talks. Today's episode was recorded and co-produced by Mark Never Sleeps Yoshizumi. Make sure to check out past episodes recorded at this year's Pitchfork Music Festival, including Zola Jesus with Circuit Des You, Japanese Breakfast with Alex Cameron, and Vagabond with Julie Byrne. Subscribe to catch the final upcoming talk recorded at the fest, Tierra Wack, She of Wack World, with the brilliant Namdi Ogbanaya, as well as a pair of talks we just cut at the Decemberists' Traveler's Rest Festival in Missoula, Montana. And as always, for backstage, behind-the-scenes content, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And listeners, if there's someone you'd love to hear on TalkHouse Podcast, hit me up direct. You can slide into my DMs on Twitter. I'm at Elia Einhorn. Annie, I am so pleased to give our first huge thank you for our new theme song, To the Range. Oh, beautiful work. Let's go out on that right now. <laughs>